I wish there was a go. <laughs> well, you just filled in perfectly. Did you, I? Your response was spot on. That's what I wanted to do. Of yes. course, it's Intrigue Journal time with Sean Paul. Hello, everybody. Hello, guys. Hello. I wasn't too concerned about that shark because it was coming straight for you. <laughs> No, no question, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to be fine. Too. Yes. Um, so th I think Shark Week is coming up on Discovery Channel. Mm -hmm. Big thing. And uh, ironically, there's a ton of news about shark attacks. And I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm here to report. <laughs> and you're reporting it. <laughs> um, so let's look at shark story number one. Okay. And uh, that would be shark attacks are on. We have a slide for that, too, by the way, don't we? Uh, there we go. Okay, hey, I'm going to step over here so I can look at the All screen. Right. Well, this I'm is just look. kind of interesting. This is actually a story that broke in uh, 1916 in New Jersey when a shark took out like four people in two weeks. And that was in New Jersey. And at, prior to that, they didn't think that sharks would even attack that wow. far north in water that cold. And this was actually the premise for, that led to the movie Jaws. But anyway. Wow. Okay. But let's talk about uh, sharks in the news now. Sh shark story number one would be that shark attacks are on the rise in Australia. So far this year, there have been uh, is it five or six? Five fatal shark attacks. And the last time they had five fatal shark attacks in the whole year was 2014. Well, we're not even halfway through. We've already had that many. Wow. So wow. The, and the last one was a 15-year-old boy that got uh, pulled down. All of them, I think, believe by uh, great white sharks. Shark story number two <laughs> would be, um, this didn't happen uh, recently. It happened in 2017, but they're just talking about it now. And her name is Leanne Erickson, 38-year-old mother of three. Oh. She was swimming off a beach oh, in Southern California. And she said when something grabbed her leg and started pulling her straight down, she knew exactly what it was. The water it started getting much darker and colder. And so she just hauled off and punched it in the eye. Oh. And yeah, she I heard that's what you got to do. Well, and she said it felt like her foot fist was going into a, a, a cup of jelly and the shark released. She managed to get up there. Her fiance paddled her back to shore. She'd lost a ton of uh, blood. Uh, millions of dollars of uh, operations later, she's got. She can walk. She kept her leg. No feeling in it, but she's just glad to be alive. So wow. that's amazing. Harrowing story, though, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, shark story number three. This one's fascinating. Okay, caught on film. Not that this has never happened before, but the guy with his drone caught it. A 50-minute attack where a shark took out a 33-foot great uh, humpback whale, and the whale was on his own, probably not in the best of health. Shark came in and nailed it in the tail, let it bleed for about 15, 20 minutes, and then he came in and dragged it down and drowned the whale, and took it out. Now, oh, this is depressing. Not, Sean a, Paul. not a feel good story, but a fascinating. This is nature. This is, this is the world oh, we live in. Circle of love. Uh, there you go. Well done. Okay, so, um, but you know, sharks are, a lot of people say they're misunderstood. These great white sharks are completely misunderstood. And yeah, I've heard that the sea is salty from the tears of misunderstood sharks. <laughs> That's why it's salt water. You know, it's funny. I, that's exactly what I was about to say next. That was in my really? notes. I can show no, you. No, oh, that was like, great, though, Kaylee. That's yes. Great. All right. But I did talk to Kaylee Burns. Kaylee Burns, I talked to her last year. She's with One Ocean Diving and uh, Ocean Ramsey. And um, she. They swim with great white sharks, and they're, they're, they've caught up this documentary called Saving Jaws, and they want, they want to educate people. Can we see what she had to say about swimming with deep blue? I'm with a great white, and yep. we did get in the water and observe that animal, and uh, she was very actually relaxed and mellow in demeanor. Um, it would have been extremely hard to be bitten by the shark. I would have had to like put my arm down her throat in order for something like that to happen because she was um, very large, very pregnant, and she's likely been feeding all night, so she was very full, and her movements were not quick at all. It would be very easy for us to get out of the way. Of course, uh, we're not recommending that anybody else do this or try to imitate this, as every shark can be completely different. Um, she is uh, a little bit older in age, likely, um, and likely pregnant as well, so her demeanor in particular was very relaxed, but it might not always. Right. Yeah. So you look at the scorecard, though, which shark attacks the most? And they've got a, I did some research here. And, and can we just show that slide? Uh, which shark attacks the most? The most commonly, um, let's see, it's the great white. Uh -huh. so number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is the tiger shark. Really? Number three, I'm not going to tell you until the very end, because they say that the third one could actually be more than all of them put together. Oh, wow. and I'll get to that in a second. Okay. But tiger sharks, what does Kaylee Burns think about tiger sharks, the number two pre uh, predator? Can we roll the video on that? 
personal favorite species of shark is a tiger shark. Okay, because why? Uh, they're really, actually, really extremely shy animals, and they're nomadic, so they typically don't compete with other animals whatsoever. But unfortunately, because of their size and what they typically eat sea turtles, they do get a really bad reputation. So they're just so different than they're made out to be, and I think that's really special, as well as they're just really beautiful with their stripes all on their body. Hmm. They are beautiful, though. Yeah, she said so. That's what, that's what she said. That's her opinion. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, I asked her, though, have you ever heard the premise, though, that sharks can smell blood from miles away? Yes. yes. You've heard that, right? Yeah. A great white shark can smell a small uh, uh, portion of blood from as far as three miles away, right? And that's what I, So I asked her, I said, will you take these tourists in Hawaii to go uh, swimming with sharks? Would it bother you if somebody, as they're jumping out of the boat, they scrape their foot yeah. and they get cut and they're so jacked up and they're so, their adrenaline is going so high, they don't even realize yeah, they're bleeding yeah. and they yeah. enter the water? Would that bother you? That was the big question I asked her, and let's see what she said. Hmm. Say you're jumping into the water uh, with, with a group of tourists and somebody uh, scrapes their foot or their leg as they're jumping into the water and their nerves are going so much they don't even realize that they're bleeding. Does that change yeah. the situation? Of what might that happen? is totally a fine situation. Sharks actually have very little response to human blood. It's actually only uh, fish blood and, and things that are in their natural diet. Again, we have to remember that these animals have been on the planet a lot longer than humans, so there really isn't much of a response there at all. Um, I've been in the water with people bleeding. And we're not made up of anything that these guys were programmed to eat over hundreds of millions of years and their instincts and stuff. So uh, it's, it's a perfectly safe situation if you have, you know, a little minor cuts and scrapes and things like that in the water with sharks. Good to know. The more you know. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I think that that speaks primarily to great white sharks. Um, I I did some research. Which which shark is the most aggressive? All right, okay. and it's actually probably responsible for the most unprovoked fatal attacks on humans. Not the great white, not the tiger shark, but this shark. It also happens to be the most aggressive, and what's really terrifying is it can swim in fresh water. Oh! It recycles the salt in its body so it doesn't depend on living in salt water and it can actually swim up the Mississippi River and it has. There was actually a documented attack by this shark in Lake Michigan. In Chicago. What? No. In nope. Chicago. What? What kind of shark is it? I, I'm running out of names of sharks here, Sean Paul. I don't know. We're going to talk about that next week. Wait, you're not going to tell us this week? We have to wait? Next week. What? what? I know hammerhead sharks don't necessarily go for humans. Yeah, okay. uh, you know what? In my research, not n they didn't make the top three or four as far as being aggressive, but you know they look menacing. Yeah, that's I the only need, other shark I can think of. I need to watch Shark Week because I'm running out of. I don't even can't even tell you another shark. Like I'm going. Right. But I mean, shark it's, I mean, think about this. Is it's it's aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's responsible for probably more deaths than any other shark because this shark doesn't have the recognizable markings of a great white shark or a tiger shark, and if you look at the, the attack reports, more often than not it says unconfirmed as far as what it was, unknown species, unknown species, and they believe that it is this shark. And if you're thinking to me, Sean, that's BS, you're right, because it's called the bull shark. Uh, wait, so we don't have to wait. until next week? Well, I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you how it can get into the Great Lakes next week. Okay, the bull shark. Okay, and you know, people make menacing. fun of me all the time for not wanting to go swim in a lake. <laughs> uh, Jeremy just there. might have this one figured out, everybody. Hello. Yes. I think, I, I think I'm good without swimming in lakes if that is a possibility. Well, you know what? Just looking in a lake, if you can't see the bottom. That's my motto. Yeah. If I can't see the bottom, I ain't swimming. There, you know yeah, there? exactly. So I'm saying, Sean Paul, thank you so much. My pleasure. I we'll see you next week. Dare I say I'm intrigued about what you're bringing next week? It's, yes. It's very don't go anywhere because we've got the next segment coming right up. We're going to talk about how bull sharks can infiltrate lakes and rivers. But if you wouldn't mind, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. Hit that thumbs up. Give us some comments about what you think about the likelihood of sharks going up rivers and living in lakes. Welcome back to Ozarks Fox AM. It is time for another intriguing intrigue journal with Sean Paul. And Sean Paul, last week, you left us kind of with a cliffhanger 
and we've been on the edge of our seats ever since. And you were thinking, BS. I was. Bull shark. <laughs> That's it. That's what you were thinking, right? Is that a real thing for real, though? Bull sharks? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what, uh, what we were talking about is what makes them especially terrifying is, is that, you know, when, when I was a kid, we'd go to the cabin, we'd go on the lake, and I'd just seen Jaws, and I wouldn't go near them. My dad would say, don't worry, sharks don't live in fresh water. BS. Oh. The bull shark can actually recycle the salt in its body, and it isn't dependent on salt water to, to exist. And it frequently, frequently is known to swim up the Mississippi River, and uh, just like swimming, swimming up, uh, salmon swimming upstream, it's gone up 2,000 miles up the Amazon River in, in Brazil. So They're, the ocean isn't good enough for them? It, it's not whole, <laughs> it's not whole, they don't stop there. Okay, and let's look at the list as far as what uh, sharks attack the most. Okay. We got a little graph here, and they go, great whites are the number one, they said okay. tiger sharks are the number two, and then they say the bull shark is the third most fatally unprovoked attacks. But in reality, let's look at what the most aggressive shark is, and that would be the bull shark. While the great whites get most of the headlights, bull sharks might be the most dangerous shark of them all. Recorded in 69 recorded attacks, but as I said last week, they don't have these easily identified markings. They just look right. like a shark. And if you go down the attack list, most of them under species, it says unknown. You can tell what a great white shark looks like. You can tell what a tiger white shark looks like. But if they can't tell, more than likely it's a bull shark. So this could be the most dangerous shark. Wait, are you saying from the bite they can tell? Uh, or just if they have no, to see no, them? No, people get bit, but then they see the body. They, right. they can't really recognize. Oh. They don't know what it is just by looking at I it. I gotcha. And that's a problem. So let's look at the, the shark's resume, all right? And uh, so they, we've got a slide for this, I believe. And they are one, the, uh, the most aggressive, probably responsible for the most attacks, most aggressive, easily thrive in freshwater rivers and lakes. That's like a triple threat, right? And they're known for swimming hundreds, if not thousands of miles up rivers all over. Now, this is a picture of a golf course in Australia. And there was flooding one year, which annexed a river into the lake of a golf course. Okay. And the bull sharks that were swimming up the river spilled over into the lake on the golf course. And now, you want to talk about a water penalty when you lose your ball in the water? Oh. You don't, here, you don't go after it. No. no. It's gone. Now, I'm just wondering, do, you char do they charge more or less because there's sharks at this golf course? I would charge more. Yes. I, I would That's go. an attraction, right? Yeah, I would go. Six of them in this lake, and they've actually started reproducing. <gasps> okay, why didn't we stop it sooner? Now, let me just ask you, is this not intriguing? This is pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? No comment from them. I'm guessing they'd rather I go. Just, they want to go back to cooking. I'm mortified. <laughs> yes. I'm mortified. Well, um, so let's go diving with the sharks, shall we? Mm-hmm. Why and uh, we have a video for this. Oh. And I want to show you before and after. I might, okay, so this is swimming with a great white shark. That's Ocean Ramsey. Big uh, advocate for people understanding the difference. Now, this is swimming with uh, bull sharks. And these are professional divers. Not nearly the attitude that Kaylee Burns has. You'll see that when you see the divers, they're all laying down on the, on the, the seabed. And they, they're not showing one square inch of skin. Um, in their uh, on their bodies. Look at them. Strength in numbers. They are like cowering. On, that's my buddy Todd Charles. There, he's the one that gave me the footage of this. But they're they're from head to toe covered. They don't want anything white that could be mistaken as fish because these guys are very very aggressive. It's a totally different attitude between bull sharks and great white sharks. Isn't that a fascinating? Wow. They're just hungry. Yeah. Are they eating those little white fish swimming around? Uh, well, they might be. Yeah. Okay. But, but humans look tastier. Right. So let's go up the Mississippi, shall we? Okay. All right. In, uh, what was it, 1937, this man caught a bull shark in Elton, uh, Illinois, which is just north of St. Louis. Mm -mm. Caught uh, almost a 100 pound bull shark. See, in the I was about to say that looks like a little guy. But that's 100 pounds, yep. and that could easily take off your foot. It, it would hurt. Oh, yeah. You would feel it, you know? Oh. And, and, so that, and so then we go to the global attack file Okay. for shark attacks. The global attack file. That sounds intense. Look, is, well, I'm trying to sound intense. Thank you. <laughs> All right? And the year is 1955. There was an attack by a bull shark, Chicago, Lake Michigan, in Chicago. 
How is that possible that we would have sharks in our Great Lakes? Okay. How is that possible? Okay, well, back then it could have probably navigated up through the Mississippi River and, and made it through its way, the locks and dams. Mm -hmm. Kind of a long shot, but I'm about to share with you a very plausible theory okay. as to how these sharks that can exist in fresh water um, can get from, the, let's say, the Caribbean up to the Great Lakes. And this is not my theory. This is from marine biologists and professional divers. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Do you, want, do you want to know what the most uh, common way that invasive species can get transplanted from one part of the world to another? How? How? Telepathic powers. Telepathic powers. Aliens. Time travel. Wow. You guys have been watching a lot of Intrigue Journal. Thank you. Uh, it might not be that exciting, but it is intriguing. Through ballast tanks. Huh? Ballast what? tanks. Okay, so Jeremy, when a, when a ship uh, drops off a bunch of containers, yeah. they have to fill the bottom of the ship to give it to, to, to yeah. stabilize yeah. it, right? Those are the ballast tanks. But okay. when, they, when they empty, when they take their cargo off, they fill up the ballast tank. And in Rio de Janeiro, they could pick up a juvenile bull shark in the ballast tank. Oh, wow. Uh, the shark. It's a hitchhiker on a sea freight. I gotcha. So now it's going up the side of um, South America. It's going up through the Caribbean. It's going, this ship is going up through the East Coast. And it's a good thing because the shark would never survive in waters these cold. Now it's coming in through the St. Lawrence River Seaway. Do you seaway. think that affects the water at the bottom of the boat, though? The cold waters? That's a good question, but uh, the Obviously. marine biologists don't seem to think so. Right. Um, anyway, so we're going through the St. Louis River, St. Lawrence River, these sea passages, the locks and dams. He's mm. getting a free ride. Wow. How In is the, he sustaining food? Oh, you know what? Don't get ahead of me. That's a oh, great, question. great question. That's a Haley. great question. Well done. <laughs> if she had just timed that like in 45 seconds, seconds, it would have yeah. oh, synced up perfectly. <laughs> All right, so here we are in the Great Lakes. Final, final stretch, going through a couple more of these man-made passages, getting us into, let's just say, Lake Superior, where the iron ore range is, okay? In northern Minnesota, there's a lot of wealth up there because of the iron range, and they would ship all of their iron ore through these passages, and it would go out to the rest of the world, okay? So this freighter gets there, and it's gonna pick up a delivery of iron ore. It's, it's off, and so here's the ballast tank. Bruce, Empty. the bull shark, is set free into Lake Superior. So but, how big are these openings? But are we thinking, is this really, is this really conceivable? Is this right, really is possible? Yeah. And like she said, how are they gonna live? Well, guess what? The shark is not the only one that's being picked up. Right. It's getting all this other marine life and a professional diver explained that to me. And so they get not just a free ride, but a food source for the trip as well. Free buffet. They get a free cruise. Oh my yeah, gosh. I wanna be a shark. <laughs> now, I do not. I will say this. While this does seem intriguing, in, in, they would probably only live through the summer because oh. up in the Great Lakes, it gets far too cold right. for any shark to survive. So right. while it would be plausible for them to actually make it up to, um, to uh, Chicago, Lake right. Michigan, see the sites, go to some of the museums, maybe attack somebody, uh, they're probably not going to live much longer. Well, that's that. something. That's some solace to know, to think, okay, <laughs> right. right. That's a good way to go out. I mean, just a little joy trip. Right? See another part of the world. Yeah, Sean Paul, yeah, exactly. intriguing as always. Challenge your reality, everyone. Thank you yes, so much, guys. Thank you, Thanks, Sean Paul. Sean. I'll never look at Tanicoma Lake the same way. <laughs> uh, don't go anywhere. More fun on Ozarks Fox AM right after this. Yeah, there's sharks everywhere now. Let's just not Only do it. Only if you can see the bottom.